Hello, my name is Daniele and uh, this is a re-recording of the uh, PsychoPG of the Python and Postgres talk that we had at the uh, PG session uh, that happened in uh, November 2021 in Paris, organized by Dalibo. Uh, thank you very much for having me here and uh, I would like to talk to you about uh, Python and PostgreSQL. Um, PostgreSQL is uh, something that doesn't uh, need a presentation really because this is a PostgreSQL um, uh, conference and uh, most people know the system either as uh, developers or as a system other system as administrators. Um, so uh, what we'd like to see is how we can uh, possibly use uh, uh, Python from uh, uh, PostgreSQL from Python. Python also doesn't really need so much of an introduction nowadays because uh, it's no much, uh, it's no more an outsider of a programming language. It's been around for uh, 20, 30 years probably. Uh, it's pretty ubiquitous. It's pretty used in uh, academia. So future people, uh, current, present people coming from the university to the world of uh, the IT. Uh, possibly have done some of the studies in Python and uh, so it's already something that might be already familiar and if you instead you haven't never seen it this is uh, pretty much how it looks Python you can recognize it because it's the thing with the white spaces um, it has a very um, simple um, syntax it has a very high level structure and takes care of uh, low level details such as man memory management so it is a uh, really a good uh, language, very simple to use, and nowadays it has uh, pretty much uh, libraries to interact with whatever protocol or whatever services is out, is out there. So it's ideal to have it as a glue language to connect um, to connect uh, Python and PostgreSQL. And when you want to uh, make Python talk to PostgreSQL, usually what you use is uh, SecoPG. There's weirdly named library um, which has been uh, has been around for uh, quite a long time and it's pretty much the industry standard uh, for uh, communication between uh, Python and Postgres. It has quite a long history, PsychoPG2 which is not the first uh, generation obviously. Um, I'll find back the first commit was uh, actually a re-import of something that crashed and in 2004, so it's pretty much 18 years old. Um, uh, it's ready to, take, to get a driving license. Um, so it's a very mature code base. Um, it is uh, very well tested, of course, having, having been uh, uh, used for uh, such a long time. Uh, problem is that uh, being so old is based on uh, um, assumptions and features that uh, Postgres and uh, PsychoPG had at that time and things have changed pretty much well, a lot in, uh, in the last 18 years. So for a long time there has been uh, the need of uh, creating a, a breaking, um, breaking version and uh, this has been done more recently with PsychoPG3. Uh, first commit in PsychoPG3 as we can see is a uh, quite newer, it's uh, less than two years old, and the first stable version of PsychoPG3 has been uh, released in um, in October 2021, so after a um, bit more than one year of development, um, and uh, it's been around for a few months, um, looks pretty stable so far, of course uh, it's not as used as PsychoPG2 yet, but uh, we are hoping to give it time and, uh, and see if there will be uh, a, a better uptake, um, and we will see how it goes. Really, um, reasons for uh, having a PsychoPG3. Probably the most important one was uh, how uh, parameters are handled um, for um, in, during the communication with the with the database. Uh, PsychoPG2 predates the version of the protocol that allows to send. Uh, query separated from the parameters uh, to the databases. 
so it used to it use it does still does it composes the query on the client side it puts together the query with the argument and send everything together to the to the server um, doing uh, using the system calls that send uh, to the two parts separately is a breaking change because it requires um, pretty much the um, the cast roots of the database have, have subtle differences that anyway make it a, um, a breaking change so that needs a major uh, version increments plus a lot of things have changed since um, psychopg2 uh, was um, pretty much written almost entirely, the core was almost entirely in C because that's the way you would have done in the past uh, in order to connect Python to a C library um, but that created a few difficulties um, because nowadays a lot of systems don't come pre-packaged with a compiler I mean, uh, something that we in Linux world we wouldn't have thought possible a long time ago but this is uh, the case nowadays and we're not talking just about uh, the youngsters who don't have a database we're also talking about uh, docker images that we want as small as possible so we we only install their uh, not a complete um, Linux system so now psychopg 3 is uh, a pure Python module and it's possible to add a speed up module on top of it to only re which only re-implement in C the um, the most the most used uh, the hottest path the most used functions. It supports asynchronous communications and it does a lot of changes that pretty much. Uh, improve and fix the mistakes that uh, we've been able to make in 15 years so we are preparing hopefully to make other 15 years of mistakes based on uh, this new code base uh, a very interesting thing that happened in this code base is that uh, um, it was sponsored by uh, companies which um, like the project were, uh, were interested in uh, uh, being active uh, maintainer, active uh, supporter of the uh, free software systems that then they use in in uh, in their business. Um, the the one I'm really um, grateful to are uh, Postgres Pro from uh, Oleg Bartunov and Common Prons from Joshua Drake, um, and Alibo is also one of the major contributor in uh, for uh, for PsychoPG and one of the people who have made possible and. Uh, there are people in Dalibo who are uh, actively uh, supporting PsychoPG with writing code, so thank you very much to them. Um, so, as a quick introduction of uh, this library, um, it is a library. Um, it is not a framework, it's not a daemon, it runs in the background, so it is um, um, very um, non-invasive in the design of your application. It's the easiest thing you can drop into an application from the moment in which it needs to start communicating with Postgres. It is based on libpq as a precise design choice. The libpq is the official um, Postgres client library. It is developed by the same core developer who developed Postgres. So we can expect it to be feature complete. We can expect it to be efficient and secure and so we prefer to use the libpq for everything there is um, the communication between python and postgres and we don't access directly to the um, to the network layer of the communication of uh, between the between clients and server uh, it's written uh, part in python and part in c the uh, from psychopg to to three the the, the blend has changed, so we went from being almost a 50-50 with a very chunky module written in C to be a more 85-15 maybe, uh, where a large part of the system is written in Python and only the speed up functions are written in C, so adapters and the tightest part of the decoding and coding of the network communication. Uh, installing it is uh, pretty simple because uh, Python has a package manager so um, using a pip install you will get 
the basic version of PsychoPG, which is the pure Python module. Uh, this is complete, uh, but requires that uh, on the client it is installed the uh, libpq library. Uh, this is a relatively easy um, thing to fulfill because, after all, if on a computer you have a PSQL installed, you have the libpq. Uh, libpq is also the, the library that is used by PSQL for its communication. So, um, um, if you have a PSQL in a system, it's more like it's very likely that uh, the libpq is installed as a dynamic library, and PsychoPG will find it and will use it. Um, alternatively, uh, you can use uh, the the C extra to the pip to pip install. Uh, this uh, will uh, allow to install a uh, package that, uh, however, gets compiled. On the clients where uh, where it installed, that means that the computer must have a C compiler already installed and must have the development library of a uh, libpq SSH library and all the other libraries that are required, um, and uh, it will still uh, use the system libpq after um, the package has been compiled. But this is uh, probably the most professional way to use uh, PsychoPG because it creates a library that is uh, well tweaked on the target system and still maintainable because it uses the dynamic library. As an alternative, which is uh, particularly useful in this time, especially for uh, um, uh, for um, Docker system, for instance, where you create an image from scratch in a um, reduced environment, uh, there is a binary package that uh, comes pre-packaged with uh, not only a version already pre-compiled of the C extension, but also with all the depending uh, libraries. For instance, uh, the libpq, the libssl, um, libraries to talk with LDAP, um, which makes it a complete system, um, but uh, it's not uh, available for all the distribution, but thankfully recently has also been uh, made, able to, made, made available for Alpine Linux. Uh, which means that there is um, several uh, base Docker images can make use of it and uh, in order to create very small uh, images. The use is, uh, I don't know, I'd like to think that it's pretty simple because uh, you import the, the package in your uh, program and you will uh, create a connection object, which is a familiar object. It's a, is um, it's similar to a uh, PSQL connection to the database, but it allows to use um, the to send query and receive return results from uh, Python instead of uh, in text formats. Um, the connection allows you to execute statements. Um, a statement that gets executed is returned as a cursor, um, but this cursor is a client side structure is not a by default a cursor on the server it's possible to use cursors on the server but it's not the default um, so we execute statements and we get results that we can use in the rest of the program in this example the function the execute function takes a, um, a query that is uh, represented as a string in, uh, in Python, but most of the time you will not have a complete string and you will have a, a template of a string where certain parameters come from uh, the, the rest of the program. So you will have the need to send a query of yours together with the parameters coming from the outside. And this has been in the past the source of a lot of programs, uh, problems in uh, several programming languages or uh, simply when people Things naively that uh, it's okay to create manually using the string manipulation um, features of the language. Uh, create dynamically a query by merging the values together. So using things like this, putting a placeholder in quotes and then passing the strings. And this is the this has been the cause of a lot of problems and because uh, it's relatively easy to craft a malicious value. Uh, in order to corrupt the query and make it do whatever it wants. Uh, this is a type of attack called the SQL injection 
and um, many novel rhythm programs are, uh, are affected by it. Uh, thankfully, Psychopoeg makes easy to stay on the safe side by keeping the two things separate, by passing um, the query string with the placeholders that only indicate where the parameters should be uh, should be passed. Keep that separate from the parameters themselves. Um, in PsychoPG2, this results in a query that can get merged with the same technique but don't write, so uh, no SQL injection uh, thankfully has ever been reported from program using uh, PsychoPG2 correctly. And in PsychoPG3, this uh, results in extra security because query and values are, are sent separately. But uh, it's still important that uh, this goes through um, PsychoPG in the correct way because there will be a translation step where uh, the value which are uh, Python objects are translated in the right syntax that the Postgres, uh, the, the Postgres expects in order to be, for instance, inserted into, into a table. Um, on the other hand, uh, there are uh, on the re receiving results from the, from the database, there are um, a few methods uh, that are exposed by the cursor um, that can be used, for instance, to retrieve a single record when we know that uh, the query has uh, returned a single result, or possibly no results, or at most one, or uh, you can uh, iterate in various ways over a larger set of uh, records that have been uh, returned from the database, or get a list of them, or uh, different ways that are useful in uh, different cases. And when we talk about records, uh, even this is something that can be configured. In its most basic form, it's a tuple, which means that um, it is a sequence of values, of um, decoded Python values, um, but it's something that can be widely configured. Uh, for instance, it's, uh, it's typical to get a dictionary uh, re containing the, the returned value. And uh, in PsychoPG3, uh, makes also uh, very easy to create, uh, uh, to configure a cursor to return um, object of a certain type that a developer can provide. This is actually uh, a very nice feature and this was provided by Denise uh, who works uh, together with Dalibo so I'm very grateful for it because it, it's very nice design. It's, very, it's a very nice design and I'm very happy to have received it. Um, what is in a record? It is uh, uh, Python objects um, which are uh, mapped to and from a uh, Postgres data type. Python is a very rich language, has a, a lot of different um, data types and some of them map well on Postgres data type, some of differences. For instance, uh, of course, there's numbers, but uh, representation of numbers is different from uh, Postgres 1. Uh, Python has only one integer uh, data type, but is an arbitrary size integer, whereas instead uh, uh, Postgres has a few int4, int8 uh, um, type of integers which are uh, constrained in size, instead as uh, an arbitrary, uh, arbitrary size number, but is uh, uh, it is an it has a decimal part, whereas the Python is only uh, is only integer. So the two types uh, overlap, but there is not really a one-to-one -one match. There is still the possibility of choosing what you want to do, but Psychology tries to do the th the right thing. Let's say the the thing that is uh, um, more most likely uh, the the right thing out of the box. So, <laughs> for instance, trying not to lose precision. And then, if you need to trace the precisions for speed, for instance, you can decide to use floating-point numbers uh, when you receive decimal. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a choice that is still possible. Or um, another um, case in which the two types don't overlap precisely, but it's good enough, is with arrays. Um, Postgres arrays are really different from Python lists because a Python list can contain uh, different. Uh, different data types, um, but it's uh, very useful for uh, 
uh, when you want to receive arrays to receive them as a, as Python list and as I could read that does that out of the box. There are other uh, more advanced data type uh, like uh, UHD or uh, network types. Um, there is a very fine configuration for JSON because JSON can get converted in different ways in Python. Um, and all of these are uh, all of these data types are uh, supported by PsychoPG, and there is always the possibility to adapt the way uh, the, to tweak the way that they are adapted when the, it is possible to make choices. Other data types instead are uh, um, only PostgreSQL. Um, for instance, the range data type is a specific PostgreSQL data type, and uh, in these cases, PsychoPG offers some wrappers in order to receive an object anyway in Python where the content can be accessed. For instance, in the case of range data type, you will have an object that, where, that contains the, the bounds of the, of the, of the range. Uh, Multi-range is also uh, returned as a, something that looks like a list of range and uh, there are a few other objects for which PsychoPG has uh, its own uh, representation in Python because Python doesn't have a native uh, valid representation for it. Uh, something that in PsychoPG3 specifically has been improved a lot, especially because PsychoPG2 was uh, born in a way in a time in which the with statement didn't even exist, is the transaction control. So in uh, PsychoPG3, it's possible to control the transaction in a very visual way um, where you write some code that is indented and everything that gets indented into this block uh, will be executed uh, into the same transaction. And uh, if there is uh, any error inside the block, the entire transaction is automatically rolled back, whereas uh, when, the blocks, uh, when the block exits, uh, the transaction is committed, and those transactions are also can can be also nested automatically. PsychoPG will use uh, the save point statements in order to uh, create nested transaction, and it's possible also to only roll back an, uh, the nested part of a transaction and, uh, and compose those features in in different ways. Uh, the copy support is uh, another area there in PsychoPG three has uh, got a lot of improvements because in the past in PsychoPG2 uh, it, was only, it was only file based pretty much you could uh, use the copy statement from Python but the input should have been a, a, a file either a real file or a, a file like object but anyway something that the developers had to uh, format themselves for instance using uh, um, CSV or um, just a converting every python data type into the into the the right syntax so it was like a, there was this feature available in psychopg2 for the queries but not for uh, for copy now uh, copy is instead uh, based on python objects which means that uh, they get through the same adaptation system of the queries and so it's very easy to uh, write a system that generates Python data and this Python data is sent to Postgres using the copy protocol which means it's uh, pretty much the most efficient way to populate large, uh, large, ta large tables. It also can be also used uh, together with uh, other normal queries, together with the um, with the, with the transaction system so it makes a, a very nice integration of Python uh, uh, together with uh, this very efficient way to load data into the database. Um, and uh, almost almost opposite, uh, there is a, a nice support for notification system where uh, you can uh, get information coming asynchronously out of the database. The database can notify um, a, a listener that uh, some change has happened, um, for instance, it, some areas in which it's very useful is when a certain uh, configuration table changes, uh, in which case all the clients that are interested in that change can get notified and sorry of the configuration. Um, and um, it's uh, it's useful to create uh, to start creating more complex system where the database is only is not only a 
a final storage of the system but also an active part that can notify back uh, the clients of uh, something interesting that might be happening in its data type. Um, another area of improvement has been the connection pool. Um, this is a uh, um, offered as an extension to PsychoPG in a, into a sort of a um, extension package because uh, PsychoPG is uh, pretty much a mechanism whereas a pool is uh, more uh, a policy of use of it so we expect different type of bugs and different requests um, and we, we want to ev evolve it separately from, uh, from PsychoPG so this is an in-process connection pool which means that your Python projects, your Python uh, process that is running will uh, get hold of a certain number of connections or even no, no connections and uh, the, it will scale up with the use and um, this allows to get connection quite efficiently because they are already open and uh, you can uh, uh, make a um, fast uh, you, you, can, you can decrease the latency of an operation by uh, factoring out the connection time. Uh, it doesn't replace PG Bouncer uh, in uh, several use cases, especially when uh, the same set of connections should be used by more than one process, but um, it's still useful for, uh, uh, even if people is not interested in having a connection pool, a pool of connection, it's still a useful object because it protects a server from a runaway client because um, you can instruct it to you can instruct a client for instance to n never use more than five connections so even if it's exposed to the internet and it received a surge of a request or even a malicious surge of request it can uh, still throttle down uh, uh, the the number of connections that are used on the on the server and there are lots of other features that uh, in uh, several use cases could be used um, PsychoPG3 offers uh, asynchronous support, PsychoPG2 was uh, only uh, multi-thread uh, both the systems can, can be used to create uh, uh, scalable, pro problem, scalable programs and uh, to serve more than one user at a time the PsychoPG3 also offers uh, support for static typing which is uh, a feature that has been introduced in Python only in the latest versions of the of the language uh, there are features which address uh, the performance of the query such as uh, using uh, more or less automatically prepared statements or using more or less automatically uh, binary data sometimes uh, it's more useful than others and uh, um, we we leave the possibility open to use them and also now there is um, sort of a complete access of the all the functionality offers by the libpq from python so it's even possible to write uh, code that bypasses psychopg and uses directly the libpq by using this uh, helper module uh, which could be useful to prototype um, novel ways of interacting with the database the story is not closed yet because this is a system that is in continual evolution, there are always new versions of the uh, language and of the database uh, so we are already in the, in the pipeline uh, features like using the pipeline mode that is being exposed by the libpq offered in, uh, P in the, um, from version 14 of Postgres um, the feature itself is available in older Postgres versions but uh, it's only from libpq14 that is possible to make use of this uh, functionality without decoding manually the network uh, communication um, we also expose uh, a feature that uh, is uh, possible on uh, the network communication level but postgres doesn't implement yet uh, which are streaming queries there are queries that are open and then uh, they remain open for uh, as long as the um, server decides so they never get closed on the clients by the clients and um, records are received as they get produced by the server there are a few PostgreSQL alternative implementation that already make use of them uh, one is CockroachDB, another is uh, Materialized 
and um, Secopg has been used as a test uh, system for uh, making use of this type of query from the clients. Logical replication is something that uh, is uh, already implemented in Psychopg2 and not true yet in Psychopg3. Uh, we'll be waiting for uh, designing better the system to make use of the new features. And uh, there has been a lot of research, especially done by Oleg Bartonov uh, in, uh, in the area of improving the JSON uh, subsystem in uh, Postgres. Um, we are talking about uh, a binary protocol to improve the communication, the responsiveness of uh, transferring JSON from the server to the clients. So this is an, another area where PsychoPG is, is being used as a research uh, test bench. So uh, this was a quick introduction of what is possible to do, what we have in mind to do. Um, if there are questions, uh, I'm happy to take a few and uh, because uh, this is offline now, please uh, reach us uh, on the mailing list, reach us on uh, GitHub uh, uh, questions or um, even send a Twitter. And thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for having us here and um, have a good day. Bye bye.